I'm Jordan. And I'm Dan. And today's big idea is that following Jesus means that we believe Jesus is Lord. Jordan, how would you explain Jesus as Lord to someone who doesn't know Jesus? Hmm, that's a good question. I think I might say that Jesus is the leader. He's the leader of the whole world and the leader of my life. He shows me how I should live, but he also shows us how the whole world should be. But it's more than a political leader, like a prime minister, or more than an organizational leader, like a CEO. Jesus rules over all things. He's the creator. He made all things. He's the sustainer. He holds all things together. And he shows us how things should be and ought to be. So yes, Jesus is the leader, but he's also so much more. That's so good. It's like nothing else. Let's see what this looks like in today's God story. Welcome to Deep Thoughts That Nobody Cares About. Today's question, do you get in or on a bus? Thoughts? Hey everyone, it's Aaron here and it is great to be with you. So when I was growing up, I had a really close friend named Adam and Adam went on to be a youth pastor, but when he was doing his like interim learning how to do the job, he actually lived at our house. And what's interesting is from the beginning of the year to when Adam left, I changed a lot because I really looked up to him. So I started to act very similar to him. He really liked basketball, so I started really liking basketball. He liked certain restaurants, so I started eating at those restaurants. He would say certain phrases, so I picked up on those phrases. I admired him so much that I wanted to be like him. And that's kind of a little bit what it's like to follow Jesus. As we follow Jesus, as we get to know him, as we listen to his teachings, as we follow his life, the things that Jesus is about, we're about. And we would call that putting Jesus as Lord of our life, putting him over it, allowing him to rule it, allowing him to say, I want to make you the best version of you possible, and that's one that's following me. And that's this week's big idea. Following Jesus means that we believe Jesus is Lord. When we say Jesus is Lord, that might not be language that we use all the time. When do we call things Lords? But what it means is he's the king, he's the ruler, he's the one that I commit to follow, to put aside all the things that I want, and to say I want to be more like Jesus and the things that he wants. So today's story is of the Apostle Paul. Now if you remember anything about Paul, he was the one who was persecuting and killing Christians, and then he met Jesus on the road to Damascus and he actually became one of the most famous Christians that we have. He wrote most of the New Testament. So we pick up in the story with Paul and his friend Barnabas. Now they're traveling to a city called Antioch and when they got there, they went to the synagogue. Now that's kind of like a church for Jewish people. Now in synagogues, they would read from parts of what we would consider the Old Testament. They would read the first five books of the Bible, often called the Pentateuch. They'd also read a lot of the prophets. Now as a side note, someone told me years ago, you should always read these little small books. Here's the reason why. You get to heaven one day and you run into, let's say, Habakkuk. And he says, hey dude, did you read my book of the Bible? And you say, no, that's awkward, I missed it. It's only four pages long. Just go read it so you can avoid the situation completely. So Paul and Barnabas are at the synagogue and the Jewish leaders say, hey, do you guys want to share anything? And of course they do. So they start by going through all the history of the Israelites, of the Jewish people. They talk about Exodus. They talk about wandering the desert for four years. They talk about how they had prophets and then kings, and they finally get to King David. And they remind them that it says King David, out of his line will come the savior that they've been expecting. And where does that lead them to? Ding, 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 Jesus. So Paul was asked to share at the synagogue. Let's read what he says. Brothers, you sons of Abraham, and also you God-fearing Gentiles, this message of salvation has been sent to us. The people in Jerusalem and their leaders did not recognize Jesus as the one the prophets had spoken about. Instead, they condemned him. And in doing this, they fulfilled the prophets' words that are read every Sabbath. They found no legal reason to execute him, but they asked Pilate to have him killed anyways. When they had done all the prophecies said about him, they took him down from the cross and placed him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And over a period of many days, he appeared to those who had gone with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to the people of Israel. And now we are here to bring you this good news. The promise was made to our ancestors and God has now fulfilled it for us, their descendants, by raising Jesus. 
Paul went on to explain the good news of Jesus, all about his life, his death, and then his resurrection. He told the story of how Jesus is no longer in the grave, that he rose from the dead. Not only that, but he used the language that they would understand. There's over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament about the Messiah. And he went on to explain that Jesus actually fulfilled all of them. And then Paul invites them. He says, listen, friends, your sins can be forgiven only through Jesus. And he leaves it up to them. He allows them to decide. They get all the information, they hear the story, and they can say, is this actually who I want to follow? This person of Jesus. So what happened next? Well, Paul and Barnabas began to leave, but the people said, no, 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 you need to come back. We have got so many questions. We want to know more about this person of who Jesus is. So that's what they did. They hung around for the next couple days, answered questions, and people began to follow Jesus with their lives. They said, I want Jesus to be Lord. I want him to control. I want him to run my life. Here's the cool thing. That same invite that all those people had from Paul and Barnabas, you and I get that now. We're invited to say, to weigh all these stories, to weigh who Jesus was and say, do I want to follow him? Do I want to put my old self behind and follow the ways of Jesus? And what that means simply is that we stick close to Jesus, that he teaches us how to live, how to love, how to be the best you that you can possibly be, which is just following him. That's it for now. See you next week. Last week, we learned that following Jesus starts with hearing the good news. And this week, it's become clear that after that, it's up to us to make it our own. Absolutely. And sometimes following Jesus, it doesn't mean we won't have any questions. Sometimes it means we might have even more questions. Yes, totally. Let's check in with Jeff. He's going to share some of his story and some of the questions he had and how that played out. So let's watch this. So when I hit high school, I started to question my faith and have doubts. I had questions I couldn't get answers for. And so in time, I just stopped believing altogether. And when someone asked me if I believed in God, I just said I didn't know. Um, maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure. I was just in a place of nihilism, that everything was meaningless that life had no purpose ultimately, that when we die, we're dead and that was it. And it left me in a pretty dark place. It came to a point where I was having thoughts about life and my life that uh, just weren't satisfying to me. I was in a place of hopelessness and I knew I just had to find some answers. Otherwise, I would just keep going down this dark tunnel that had no end. And so I wanted to really give a shot at it and see if Jesus was who he claimed he was. I remember having a conversation with one of my dad's good friends, and he was a very strong Christian, and he had great answers uh, for the questions I had and answers that I had never heard before. And that kind of sparked something inside of me to start searching for truth and searching for meaning in life. I remember reading Romans, Romans 5, 8, that says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And I think that made me realize the love of God. I just realized that uh, Jesus was my Lord and Savior, and I'd be a fool not to believe it. I remember coming to my dad and saying, you know, this seems like a legit thing. <laughs> and I just feel like I need to let go and just surrender. From that moment on, my life changed. I did a complete 180. And I just viewed people differently. People that I used to see in the street or walk by and think nothing of, when I came to Christ, I just saw them as inherently valuable. When you're underwater, obviously all the noise is mainly canceled out, so there are moments where I feel closer to God, and I remember when I wasn't a Christian and I freed of, the goal was to try to empty your mind, but when I came to Christ, 
My goal was to fill my mind with God and his love for us. And when we're free diving down deep to like 40 meters, you reach a certain point where you start to free fall and you can just effortlessly sink into the deep. And at that point in time, you just close your eyes and just let go. And that's kind of what you do when you come to faith in Christ, I think. You, you have to surrender every day to yourself and just live for him and his desires and his commandments for your life. And shooting underwater and taking photos on land of beautiful landscapes and, and underwater under ice, it's just made me appreciate his creation and the beauty of it. And he is so good and he's so real. And uh, I just want others to know him. And if I can just follow his two greatest commandments, uh, love God and love others day in and day out, uh, I think I'll be on the right track. That was so awesome. We can experience God in so many different ways. And for Jeff, that's by free diving. But that could look completely different for any of us. I know, and it's really cool that Jeff could dive deep into all of these questions and wrestle through these thoughts and in the end, choose to follow Jesus as Lord of his life. It was so encouraging to see. Let's break into our small groups now and see what this looks like in our own lives.